Hello, my friend, and welcome to Wisdom Trek. This is Guthrie Chamberlain, and I'm your guide to wisdom and creating a living legacy. Thank you for joining us for our seven-day week, seven minutes of wisdom podcast. This is day 268 of our trek, and yesterday we discovered the nine lessons learned from hiking the mountains. Today, and for the next couple days on our hike, we want to understand how life is like a seed. If you do miss any of the Wisdom Trek episodes, please go to wisdom-trek.com to listen to them and to read the Daily Journal. We are recording our podcast from our studios at the Big House in Marietta, Ohio. Sunday evening was filled with laughter and squeals as we had five of our six grandchildren over for the evening. We had pizza and watermelon for dinner, and then Gramps was changed into a monster as I changed the kids all over the house in an attempt to catch them. By the end of the evening, my throat and body were a bit sore from all the monster growling and being piled on by the kids as they tried to free the captured one. It was a great evening together. Anytime that we have opportunities to impact our grandchildren positively, we certainly want to plant those seeds within them. Fortunately, they all have very strong and loving homes, and we can reinforce the good principles in their lives. This is a very important part of living our legacy each day. As we consider planting those good seeds within our grandchildren's lives, on our hike today we want to begin a short series that will allow us to consider how life is like a seed. First, we want to see how God instructs us to learn spiritual principles from creation. Have you considered the example of the seed? Let's time travel forward a couple months and imagine that it is now springtime. The farmers are busy planting their fields. Gardeners are cleaning up their yards and preparing their gardens. They are taking the little seeds and placing them in the ground so that they will grow into beautiful flowers or fruitful plants. There is nothing quite like a fresh bouquet of flowers or the taste of fresh garden vegetables from your own garden. For myself, growing up on a farm, our primary crop was apples from the 40 acres of apple trees that we had in our orchard. But we also had a very large vegetable and flower garden that we all worked in. Regardless if the plant was an apple tree, a corn stalk, or a hollyhock flower, each one started as a seed of the same kind of plant. Seeds come in different shapes and sizes, with each type having a different requirement for germination, which is the process in which the seeds sprout and begin to grow. Small seeds must be placed as delicately as possible in the soil so that they do not get buried too deep. They are usually planted together in groups, ensuring that some of them will grow into thriving plants. Larger seeds, on the other hand, are buried deeper and generally fewer in a group. Some seeds prefer warm, dry environments, while others require environments that are cold and moist. There are seeds that will germinate in less than five days, and others that will take five months or even longer. Because there is a wide range of seed types, man has learned a seemingly endless variety of methods to cause the seeds to sprout and then grow. One common treatment is exposing the seeds to cold, almost freezing temperatures for a specific length of time, which mimics winter. Certain exotic seeds, such as carnivorous plants in Australia, or some pine cones germinate when they are exposed to fire. Some seeds germinate when they are immersed in water. Others, such as the cyclamen, germinate when they are kept in the dark for a certain period of time. Hard shell seeds must be scarred or cracked, and some seeds just sit dormant for several years before something triggers them to germinate. As you will come to see in this series, the seeds have many spiritual parallels to God's work in our Christian lives. Following the teachings of Jesus, when he shared the message of the end times in Mark chapter 13, verses 28 and 29. Now learn the lesson from the fig tree. When its branches bud and its leaves begin to sprout, you know that the summer is near. In the same way, when you see all these things taking place, you know that his return is very near, right at the door. Let's learn a lesson here and learn the example of the seed. So what is a seed? The seed is basically a copy of the plant that it actually came from. Genetically, it has all the information needed to grow into a complete plant. The seed consists of an embryo and a food store, surrounded and protected by an outer seed coat. The food store is large enough to allow the plant to grow its first leaves so that it can start producing its own food through its plants and roots. The outer coat does vary in size and thickness depending on the type of plant. Under the right conditions, This perfect little package will grow and develop into a wonderful new plant, providing food, shelter, and beauty. As mentioned earlier, a seed with a thicker shell may have to be scarred or cracked to ensure germination. In addition, some seed embryos are not fully developed for germination. In such cases, the seeds need to go through a waiting or curing period before they are ready to germinate. One universal truth from every plant that grows from a seed is that the original seed must die or be destroyed in the process of the birth and growth of the new plant. In the same manner, for God's salvation to grow through his disciples, the original seed, which is Jesus Christ, had to die. And this is taught by Jesus in John chapter 12, verses 23 through 26. Jesus replied, Now the time has come for the Son of Man to enter his glory. 
I will tell you the truth. Unless a kernel of wheat is planted into the soil and dies, it remains alone. But its death will produce many new kernels, a plentiful harvest of new lives. Those who love their life in this world will lose it. Those who carry nothing for their lives in this world will keep it for eternity. Anyone who wants to serve me must follow me, because my servants must be where I am, and the Father will honor anyone who serves me. In our first of three lessons on how life is like a seed, we considered the example of the seed, what the seed is made of, and that to produce fruit, the seed must die to itself. Tomorrow we will explore the five basic conditions that every seed needs in order to grow. So encourage your family and friends to join us and then come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. That will finish our podcast for today. Just as you enjoy these daily doses of wisdom, please subscribe to Wisdom Trek so that it will be downloaded to you each day and share Wisdom Trek with your family and friends through email, Facebook, Twitter, or in person so they can come along with us each day also. The journal for today's trek can be found at wisdom-trek.com. Thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most importantly, your friend, as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal each day. As we take this trek together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. This is Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to... Keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.